realized I love leadership. I'd come from the restaurant business and I was rookie of the year, my first year selling, uh, but I really didn't like buyers and sellers. I didn't like dealing with the stress of it. Um, and I love building things. And so I used to put restaurants together or train and open restaurants. And so it's not that different. Um, my husband, now husband, was uh, relocating back to Amarillo, Texas, where his kids lived and he wanted to be close. Yep. So I called uh, Keller Williams there and said, I want to be a leader with Keller Williams. And they said, we already have one. I'm like, no, we need to meet. Um, and Jenny, you've heard me on the phone telling people what they need to do. Yeah, you're bossy. On the airplane that day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I interviewed and I got paid a very low. What? I loved it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it got us our result. Um, and, and so I explained to them, um, I just share what my value proposition was. And they hired me for virtually no money. And, um, and then I proved my worth. And so then I just started building through being a team leader. So that started 10 years ago. I'm on my 11th year wow. in leadership. Wow. Well, here's and the deal. Company, when I here's the deal. You keep freezing up. However, I can hear your voice. Amazing. Well, now you're not frozen as soon as there you go. That's, that'd be good to be frozen on right there. <laughs> That's funny. You're frozen to me too. You're, you're frozen. Oh no. Well, but I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you too, and that's what really matters. I mean, we look amazing okay. otherwise, but okay. So keep telling your story. So you've been in real estate for 22 years. Yes, I worked as an assistant, and then I became an agent. And so um, I love transactions. I love matching people. I love being a connector in my behavior style. And so real estate was a good natural fit. Honestly, I just didn't want to be a bartender at 40. Like, yeah. I just didn't want to be like, Oh, hi, can I get you a drink? Like that just wasn't in my future. And yeah. so um, my mom was a realtor for 43 years. My grandmother was a realtor. My sister's an agent. And so that became really powerful for me. So you made your way into leadership and you've been in the business for so long that you've seen lots of ups and downs in the market, even seasonally in Chicago, you guys probably shut down every year because of weather. So you're kind of used to this. What's, what's the vibe in your area right now? Yeah. Well, right now our state is in full shutdown and we have adapted swimmingly well. Um, real estate is still an essential service in our state. So we're very lucky that real estate can still transact. Uh, closings are limited, but at the end of the day, buyers need to buy and sellers need to sell. And so as a leader, it's scary, right? You're scared. Your agents are scared. We know that we have huge um, expenses and huge commitments to people. And they're also looking for leadership in this time. And so I was actually grateful to be part of Illinois because the governor was forward thinking in uh being proactive in the shutdown. So we're ahead of a lot of the country. Um, Washington was first and then California, New York, and then us. Yeah. So we've been through the pain of what this feels like. And now we're just entering and this is our new normal. And so people that were forced to adapt are now forced to adapt. Yeah. Well, a new way. Yeah. New so way. you're... So you're talking with your agents and your leadership, I'm sure, every single day. What are they really feeling are their biggest challenges and how are you guys overcoming those? Um, their biggest challenges is direction because we were getting news, um, authoritative con like news from the state licensing bureau, from our board, from the MLS, from um, other, you know, uh, leaders in our industry and and so the state associations and licensing and so it was hard to interpret because there's a lot of gray area and so it's sending out a unified message to over a thousand agents right so then they can contact their sellers because their sellers are looking to them for leadership and they're looking and our agents are looking to us so the beauty of being a privately owned company that carries no debt not just on the local level but the national level has given us so much freedom that we can make the right decisions for our agents. Wow. Well, I know that we always think of these new times with a shifting market. We see that more as opportunity. It's going to be a challenge and yet we'll work through it as a leader. And, you know, part of your job is to bring new people, new agents to our company. Are you still having conversations and able to talk with people? Yeah, I think the conversations are different. 
Yeah. Um, it's how can I support you? It's not about what we're not getting. It's about what we offer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So our technology is included. Like there's so many little value adds. It's the local leadership that we can make decisions that don't have to go up a chain of a corporate ladder. So if we make a call that yes, we'll allow showings if it's essential, I didn't have to wait for permission up a chain of ladder to that will best affect our agents. Right. Wow. So that's what's been helpful. We're quick, we're quick responders and we were quick to get our systems in place. Cause it, you can have one office and get your systems in place, but to have um, six locations to get systems in place and unified messaging yeah. has been a daunting and challenging task. But the way our leadership teams have all stepped up as a family and as united people has been extraordinary. Like our managing brokers, it's their license, right? That everybody works under. And so they are at the most risk and I have to protect the managing brokers. And so how hard they worked uh, last Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to get these messages across. It was extraordinary to see how everybody's raised. Well, I can imagine I have gotten to be on a lot of the, the MAPS coaching calls and the bold calls. And so I'm sure on your leadership calls as well, isn't this just pretty darn exciting to hear how fast and how quick our company is moving and focusing on agents? Just hearing you say that actually gave me the chills. <laughs> like, I know we are, we are so blessed to be with someone who can pivot and make decisions um, so quickly. I mean, to change the whole training calendar, to change the whole format, to change the whole layout. And the communication has been nothing short of amazing. And has it always been amazing? No. Is it gotten better and better? Yes. And so just like our leadership teams and agents right now, we're all finding gaps in our business, yeah. right? We all are finding gaps in our business every day. And it's not how do we go from zero to 10? It's how do we fix one gap? close it, next gap, close it, next gap, close it. Because on the other side of this, I think our country is gonna be better. I think our community is gonna be better. And I think real estate is gonna be better. And like yeah. seeing my agents adapt going, oh, I'm using Zoom. And I'm like, yes. And now they have a way to communicate with people that they weren't willing to try before. So it is that forced participation. Right. I really loving and we'd already as a team a year ago talked about doing Zoom listing appointments and how efficient that could be, especially for your out of town clients to meet them face to face. You can't win some over, someone over by the phone when they haven't seen you and felt you and met you and gotten your vibe. And I'm just so excited that we'll be able to that. Hopefully we'll be able to keep lots of these technologies in place. I want to ask you about your podcast. Where did that come from, that idea? And uh, it's so much fun listening to you and your sass, just saying. Well, honestly, my sister just checked me that she's like, it was my idea first, it wasn't AJ's. <laughs> I'm like, well, so I have to correct, I can make it here. She did say that we needed to do a podcast and we just never got it together. And then AJ, who is my director of technology, said we should be doing a podcast, you should be doing a podcast because it's crazy what happens in your head. Um, and I don't know if that was for therapeutic reasons I should do a podcast or mm -hmm. he really was interested, but he used it as coaching um, with me. And it really started because I want people to understand that one, if you can't be authentic, then people will not buy into you, right? And no matter how hard you try, it'll, it'll never work. And two, that every growth is messy. And I used to be really worried about looking good and being right. And correctness was a huge um, fault of mine, I would say, a weakness or an opportunity. And showing other people how messy it really is and enjoying the journey of it. And not like yours is your journey with Jenny. Um, enjoying the journey of embracing the mess. And that took that. So a lot of this is really based on my work I've done for myself with coaching. And I have a second coach now and just trying to understand. And the messy empire is a way for me to reach people that might be going through something similar. So it has pleasantly surprised me beyond belief, um, the response that happened that we got from it. But I think people are craving authenticity and it stopped looking so perfect all the time. 
Yeah, that is such a great message because, and, and we see this all the time, especially if you utilize video or social media in your business and in your life, when you are vulnerable and transparent and real, that's when people really feel connected to you. And I think you're great at sharing that, especially through the messy empire. I just chuckle and laugh because I have met you in person and you are that spazzy sometimes. Sorry, you are. <laughs> yeah. And, and I was that's why you're... Betty. I didn't know she was. Oh, well, I was going to share the story. So, so at family reunion uh, last year, I think it was last year, the year before we, there was a snowstorm in Chicago and our family, and we were stuck in Denver from our flight. And um, I didn't know what we were going to do and how we were going to get everybody home because we had some of our leaders with us that had been away from their families. And so we ended up booking tickets into Milwaukee and I called our limo service and said, you need to come pick us up in Milwaukee. And they did and got everybody home. But I was not going to let us not get home that night. You were such an amazing leader. I could hear you. You were sitting behind me on the plane and I could hear you working your leverage, your negotiation, and all your skills. I have just, no, if I didn't know you, I'd be like, there is no doubt that woman is an amazing get stuff done -er. <laughs> It was awesome to witness. I loved it. Well, what would you say from the, the leadership lessons, the life lessons, like you shared through your, your Messy Empire podcast and just everyday life and being in the roles that you're in? What are some top lessons that you have learned that you are really sharing with your local agents and your teams right now? What are some top lessons? Uh, there is no such thing as over communication right now. Mm. So, and I'm applying this as a leader to an office, but as an agent to their client. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there's never a better time to dig in and find out, what it is that they're looking for from you. So if I'm talking to a seller, what do you need from me to ensure that things are moving along? Is it daily updates? Is it email, text, phone? How would you like to be communicated with? And just asking the question, um, it's being proactive rather than reactive. It's asking if you have listings, calling the buyer's agents and asking them, is the transaction still gonna go? Just ask the questions. Um, that you don't want to know the answer to and setting proper expectations that gets missed all the time is we don't communicate about proper expectations. And then that is something that gets, that's actually probably um, the biggest deficit in leadership relationships is expectations and same with buyers and sellers. You know, you, one of your podcasts, you said something about, your team knows that when you're just done with people, you won't look at them. And that hit home so hard for me. It still cracks me up. And so I shared it with my, my lead agents on my team. I said, you know what Karen said? And I said, that's interesting because I kind of believe that too. So, and I just like did the visual of you, people always trying to look at you in the eyes <laughs> because otherwise you're done with them. Oh, yeah. And we're like, that's hard because I cannot be authentic. Like I can't pretend that something's fine if it's not. Yeah. Although my face will show it. Like people know I pretty, I wear it. And no matter how much Botox I get, but they, they really know when I can't, I can't not be honest about how I'm feeling. And so sometimes I realize that edit self edit is so important to me and how much it's needed for me to, you know, maybe not say everything that's on my mind. Um, and so then I just can't make eye contact because I don't feel like I'm being in high integrity. Yeah. Like, I can't lie. <laughs> well, that's a good thing in a leader and a human. So we're okay with that. I love that. Well, and, what would you say? Yeah, and now they, they do feel like, they're like, like, Karen, are we good? I'm like, no, you're good. You're good. You know? Yeah. Well, and, it, it, and, because they know your, because they know your tell, they know what, what it is. They, you're, they're probably, more accountable and show up because you are a leader who expects that of them. I do. I do. And I think that's okay too. It's totally okay. So what would you say, again, I just want to get actionable items that if someone is watching and they're kind of just in the, the, the numbness of what's going on and not knowing where to start, what are some things you're telling your people besides obviously the over communication, what can they do? this week yeah 
um, honestly, it's first get, getting people into reality. The way we did things is never going to be that way again. Right. So understand and expect it. Like Gary had said last year, the year before, um, change is inevitable. Participation is optional. So you can either use this as self-defeat or you can use this as opportunity. So how do you want to show up? How do you want people to see you as a realtor? Well, I want to see him as a community connector and a community leader. And so I'm going to be a resource guide, whether it's food, it's deliverables. I see agents posting, I'll deliver things for you. I'm out in my car. Um, it's still working, but our approach must be much more gentle and we have to be sensitive because we are in very high anxiety times. It's not just Jenny feeling it. It's not just me feeling it. It's everybody feeling it. So it is about being the flight attendant, still handing out the peanuts when the turbulence is happening. Yeah. And so, uh, creating a Disney like experience for your clients. Um, I would call all my sphere. I would do neighborhood landing pages. I would get in my database and clean it up and get your systems in order, get your checklist done. But what I don't want you to do is get ready to get ready. Yeah. We have agents that have spent way too much time getting ready to get ready. And they're like, wait, it's been six months and I haven't closed a house. You're like, right. So what could they do today? Host an online virtual open house. Mm -hmm. send properties, set up safe searches, send my app. Like for me, I would send up a safe search. I have this group of girlfriends from childhood, our dream home when we retire and live like the golden girls, no offense to my husband. You know, I could create a safe search. I could do so many things to just to be more of a connector, but it's through real estate and through technology that it has to happen. Yeah. It's connecting businesses too. My sister is being very purposeful about connecting two business owners. Mm -hmm. If one offers window washing and one offers deck staining, hey, what if we created a do a little interview with you guys to show what your products are and do any specials? Yeah. I love like that. You could help a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, this time, this shift, we have the technology and tools that we can be more connected than ever. The last time we went through this, it would have it wasn't quite the same. I feel more connected. Wouldn't you agree with you and your, how many Zoom calls are you on a day? Like I was on 12 yesterday. <laughs> um, and a lot of them were Monday morning leadership meetings. But I think about um, the banks are not in the position they were in 2008. That market sucked. I was selling real estate in it. It sucked. It was not fun. Yeah. Uh, the loans are different. We're much more secure in loans. And and they have, they were all in a better position. More wealth is built through this time than any other time. So I spoke before we started today about one of my agents who um, knows that if contracts fall out or things don't close, but we're still having closings, that she ramped up her Oberweiss dairy account mm -hmm. and she sells Oberweiss dairy and Oberweiss is a big dairy company and they offer milk and a lot of goods. Well, I don't want to have to go to the store. I don't know if I can go to the store. And now she's replacing real estate income. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, is there a business in this? Is there an opportunity in this? It's not to take advantage of people, but it's going to figure out how am I going to shift and align my thinking to make it through and thrive on the other side? Because either people are going to get out of the business or they're going to thrive. Yeah. Right. There's no shaky. I have 40 married couples in our group that are um, agents, right? You talk about all eggs in one basket. Yeah. Let's get them. How are they getting creative to think about, okay, how do we diversify? Where could income come from? What are avenues? Well, obviously short sales are going to come back in, right? So people had to learn short sales when they realized I have to figure out how I'm going to work through this market. I have to learn alternative ways. I have to understand alternative financing. I have to understand what options are. Um, could you help your friends that you closed three, four, five years ago refinance on their house right now? Yep. Because what was the interest rate five years ago versus today? Probably a five back then. Yep. And I just had a friend refinance to a 15 year at 2.8, same payment. Yeah, crazy. And, and that's just, a wealth building opportunity. Yeah, and it's just educating them. You know, we're not this isn't the time to be hardcore selling. This is the time to share options and ideas. Yeah. 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 I mean, what I would do, like you were just saying about educating is I would ask my CPA to get on a zoom Yeah. and say, Hey, I'd like to open this up to my community and my sphere. Like you created a page, my sphere, and I'm going to bring my CPA on to ask questions, working, navigating right. through tax season. 
Yeah. I love that or, idea. Yeah. Like what are the vendors or what other people are needed right now to work through this? Um, could it be a credit person? Could it be um, one of your mortgage partners mm -hmm. on a Zoom? Are you interested in refinancing or how to consolidate bills? And most people are at home and not really doing anything. They're answering the phones more than ever. The yes, they are. The conversion of, of getting a real person is, is amazing right now. Um, I want to share something with you that gave, came as a huge aha to me. I have never been super purposeful about building my, my passive income through profit share. It's always just happened because I've either brought people to my team or they've just made their way. I haven't been purposeful with it. And this um, last week, as the owner of a team, and I'm not even in production much anymore, and seeing our pipeline and seeing what's under contract right now and holding on and bulletproofing what we have, I already decided that I would just not pay myself this month um, because I just, I need to save all of our expenses for team expenses. And, um, and then I went to my personal bank account the other day and the balance was higher than normal. I was like, what's happened here? I hadn't paid myself and I had almost a $2,000 profit share for last month. And I've never had one that high ever. And I was like, the universe knows. How amazing. That's an abundance mindset though. Yeah. Right. So giving up what you're used to and then the abundance fills in. So through this shift, it's mindset. Like I check, I texted one of my agents last night. How are you checking in? She's like, well, I did a zoom listing. I did this. I was like, look at you go, you know, and, um, we all are forced to do this and without guidance and leadership, everybody's looking for leadership. It's citizens, it's not just realtors, it's every industry. I would reach out to independent business owners, if I, and independent agents who don't have leadership and don't know how to navigate the laws. And business owners are lonely. So I created a, you know, a Facebook page last week about to go food in my area because let's support, I come from restaurants. So restaurants are near and dear to my heart. And how can we support restaurants that have carry out? Yep. Right. So let them post their menus and stuff there so we can all share um, each mm -hmm. other's small businesses. You know, how can we support anything that we can keep people still in business? Another great idea that one of my agents from our touch calls was packing people at college. So a lot of the kids are home from spring break mm -hmm. and they need people to go pack them that are out far away. And so her son was in Denver and they had a company that went and packed. I was like, well, for someone who just got laid off in restaurants or another industry, this could be a whole new employment opportunity. Yeah. I mean, this is it. This is when we get to get creative. And um, I know that uh, you're a fan and uh, shift is uh, now called pivot in the shift or something like that with Jay Papazan joining Jim, uh, James Shaw every morning. And that's a great resource for even non Keller Williams agents as well. That's, I invited all my lenders title. I invited everybody because that um, is so brilliantly done and how James just picked up and decided to come from contribution on it that I have so many non KW agents that are on it from across the country. It doesn't matter. Compass, um, Remax, it doesn't matter because that class is dynamic and important in today's time. And so I don't, I don't want it to be doom and gloom and Debbie Downer. And that is not, but how can we understand that a new way of thinking, or maybe it's not so consumer driven anymore. So my husband said, you've made coffee at home five days in a row. Perhaps we don't need to spend so much at Starbucks. Amazing. You could do that. I know. Okay. <laughs> Instantly we're saving money from not eating out and uh, having that glass of wine with dinner, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, look how much I've saved you. So it's, I think that the community part and as a realtor, we are the pillar of the community. It's not wait and see it's go make yourself known and make yourself present and be consistent about it too. It's, there are so many realtors that have a big idea and then they don't follow through. Well, if the community is gonna count on you, right? And the referral network, and there are so many other ways. The average millionaire has seven streams of income, mm -hmm. right? So where are those seven gonna come from? 
Yeah. It's really figuring out where's their opportunity. Cause the college packing job, I have so many restaurant friends that just got laid off. And I thought, I called my best friend. I said, do you want to start another company? And she's like, I don't have time. I'm like, I don't either actually, but what a great idea. <laughs> oh, you're fun. You're fun I mean, to keep up with. I'm sure. <laughs> I see it all as, an, well, she thinks it's like I do. So I, I see all this as an opportunity. It's not to be a capitalist or opportunistic. It's to how do we move things through and accept that things are different. Yeah, I love it. Well, mm -hmm. anything final that I didn't ask you that's just something you're talking about all the time right now or something you want to share? Um, get your systems in place. Create a community. You know, large churches talk about five to seven people in your group. Create those groups. Um, yeah, a big opportunity I have gone through in my personal growth has been, am I seeking to get agreement or am I trying to understand? Mm -hmm. So in times like this, when things are so challenging and difficult and people are sensitive, you know that old post they used to say, everything is going through something or something like that, or everyone is going through something, so be kind. Yeah. Um, is that, am I seeking to understand them or am I looking for agreement? And right now it's shifted way more to understanding and away from agreement because validating how other people are feeling is so important right now that they feel heard. It sure is. It's been so fun catching up with you and learning from you. And of course, halfway through the video, you finally weren't frozen. So it was awesome. <laughs> You're not frozen anymore either. Yay. So now we have a great connection. So we'll get back together and do this again because this was right. so much fun. And I'm just loving that even though we are not able to physically be in each other's space, we're all still more connected than ever. And I appreciate you so much for sharing. If anybody wants to get in touch with you or follow you or learn more from you, what's the best way? Um, text 630-901-3454. If we could get Apple to make an unread to market unread, no. Why is that so hard? Exactly. Um, which they don't have labs like we do <laughs> to fix it. Um, or my Facebook is a great way, but pretty much anywhere. It's everywhere, just like yeah. you are. And for sure, download your and listen to your podcast, Messy Empire, because it's Messy fun. Empire. Yeah, it's really fun. Well, I appreciate you, and if you guys need anything from me, reach out as well, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.